The subject of today's video is NFTs. What are they? Why should you care? And most importantly, why aren't you giving me money for all the digital shit I've been creating? The alternate title for this video is Ross is several months behind on what was recently a relevant topic, but not anymore. To prove that I'm cool, here's my Bitcoin address. Send me some coin and you'll sleep easy knowing that you made me just a little bit richer. In this video, we're going to cover the pros and cons of NFTs, what they could mean for you and the environment, and how they can make me, I mean you, more money. NFTs are a cash grab. They're a feeding frenzy, but just like Pogs, Jinko Jeans, and Tamagotchis, NFTs are here to stay. Today's episode on non-fungible tokens is brought to you by Fauntleroy and Friends. Who is Fauntleroy? Who are his friends? They're paying me so I don't ask questions. Shop now at fauntleroyandfriends.com slash Ross and tell them Ross sent you. Just like you never thought that mainstream media's staycation neologism of a few years back would stick until you were locked in your house for a whole year, fungible is a word we're all going to be hearing a lot of now, so let's get into it. <laughs> to start, what are NFTs and why? Non-fungible tokens, NFTs, are digital assets that are provably unique, creating digital scarcity. They can't be duplicated or divided. They have many use cases, including digital collectibles, music, artwork, and in-game tokens. Remember a few years ago when Bitcoin hit $5,000 per coin and virtually every notable investor called it a pyramid scheme? Even the Wolf of Wall Street, Jordan Belfort, thought it was a bubble, and we all trusted his opinion, of course. And yet these pesky cryptocurrencies have managed to stay, shooting up beyond 50k per coin. We've spent the last several years wrapping our head around what smart contracts are and blockchain. In theory, a global ledger is all we need to determine ownership of digital assets and the chain of ownership of these digital coins. Coins, unlike NFTs, are fungible or exchangeable or tradable. Just like the dollar bill in your pocket, you don't particularly care about the serial number on that bill, you just care about what it represents. Any dollar is as good as any other because as Homer Simpson's brain so eloquently phrased it, money can be exchanged for goods and services. When you have a Bitcoin or a fraction of a Bitcoin, you can freely trade it and there's nothing special about it. But what about creating something that is special? What about creating a digital asset that is unique and, well, not fungible? Ever since Napster, we've been trying to wrap our head around money and art and the digital world. We saw music go from incredibly valued to completely devalued overnight with the advent of the MP3 and record labels never really fully recovered. As Taylor Swift said in 2014, music is art and art is important and rare, she wrote. Important rare things are valuable. Valuable things should be paid for. Of course, Metallica would have agreed. But the trouble is and was that when you can make infinite copies of an mp3 for free without any apparent loss to the creator other than potential money earned, it's hard to argue that any digital art is rare. And as any ultra wealthy person knows, it's precisely this scarcity that digital downloads lack that makes a Monet painting so valuable. Art is rarity. Art is scarcity. If there's one of something, then it's inherently more valuable than something that there can be infinite identical copies of. That's why it's generally more important and financially lucrative to be a successful physical artist like my podcast guest Canyon Castator versus a digital creator like me for whom pennies would be too much to ask. Please, sir, can I have a penny for my troubles? Or how about just one Bitcoin? Here's my address. First, let's talk about the pros of NFTs. So NFTs are exciting because they bridge this gap. They make digital commodities rare, valuable, and scarce by using blockchain to determine the true owner of a piece of digital content. For example, take this NFT I'm selling for $10,000. I call it Donut Floating in a Sea of Chocolate Tears. Needless to say, artists who were historically poor in the digital world were super excited at the prospect of finally earning money for their hard work. NFT proponents purport to be solving exactly that problem, the near impossibility of monetizing digital artworks. As a mechanism, NFTs make it possible to assign value to digital art, which opens the door to a sea of possibilities for a medium that is unbridled by physical limitations, says Noah Davis, a specialist in post-war and contemporary art at Christie's. And part of the allure of blockchain is that it stores a record of each time a transaction takes place, making it harder to steal and flip than, say, a painting hanging in a museum. 
And so the feeding frenzy began as investors eager to own the next big thing started pouring money into NFTs. The marriage of cutting edge technology with inspired digital artwork, ephemera and memes has drawn investors and collectors to NFT marketplaces where they've spent eye-watering amounts on digital works such as Nyan Cat, an animated feline with a Pop-Tart body, which was sold by its creator for around $580,000 as Dead Mouse knows. Just like how many believe that the internet wouldn't be a big deal a few decades ago, many today fail to grasp just how much money will be circulating in NFT markets soon. This new alternative digital asset class is driving value and expanding the virtual goods ecosystem, which is expected to reach 400 billion by 2025 as an augmented reality, virtual reality, spatial computing, and direct to avatar economy collide. NFTs will probably be one of the ways that we conduct commerce in the new metaverse. How many $80,000 deeds, how many $3 million auctions will there need to be before we all take notice? But will this trend last or will it fade away like faded haircuts and faded jeans? For artists, actually earning money and shifting from ramen to fancy ramen would be a life changer. With that, we get into the second part of our video, the cons of NFTs, because there are some serious downsides to the concept. Digital assets are just zeros and one. For a large portion of the world population, owning a digital asset means nothing. However, it will make some sense for those who spend more than 10 hours a day on the internet. For example, if you're an online gamer, you will understand how important a rare piece of virtual weapon can be. But for someone who has never played an online game, that piece of weaponry is just an image in a game. Why would anyone buy an NFT? I assure you, I don't know. I also don't know why someone would buy most modern art except as a proxy for investing money elsewhere. You don't have to like a piece of art to believe that its value will appreciate over time. Collectors gonna collect, investors gonna invest. And the same kind of person who will pay top dollar for a Pokemon card is the type who will likely buy the next Nyan cat. But in addition to being possibly largely worthless, there's another very real issue with these digital assets and digital things in general, including this video. They use electricity, lots of it, and they're possibly horrendous for the planet. How much? Well, let's find out. This single NFT's footprint is equivalent to an EU resident's total electric power consumption for more than a month. Isn't that insane to comprehend? When things are digital, we just don't see the environmental costs, but it's out there in server farms, computing power, GPUs cranking away at full speed 24 seven. All of that electricity is all too often powered by fossil fuels. As an article on quartz.com states, over its life cycle, the average NFT will accrue a stunning footprint of 211 kilograms of CO2, equivalent to driving 513 miles in a typical US gasoline powered car. Does this fact change anything? Not really. Although it has led some artists to not offer NFTs for this exact reason, it's just interesting to see how certain apparently innocent things in our new world harbor deep secrets, just like that one Teletubby, and you know who I'm talking about. We don't need to belabor the point here, but the ecological footprint of NFTs is bad. Like, really. The takeaway. The world is changing, yet again, as we go more and more online. How? We don't know. The question is this. Can assets that are intangible ever be as valuable as those you can hold in your hand? The answer is a definite maybe, or probably, or yes, of course. As our economy shifts and our values shift, and the new world is a series of us adjusting our brains to comprehend that yes, things are changing forever, and yes, our concepts of value and money are about to radically forever change. Physical pieces of art are always going to be valuable and rare, but if nothing else, we're constantly figuring out how to make the digital world more and more like the real one. So we'll end with a quote from William Shatner. This is the future, the coin of the future realm. What does it mean? I don't know, but I think it's interesting and funny and possibly even a little bit scary. One thing I know for sure, I like more money, so we'll end by showing you once again my first NFT for sale, donut floating in a sea of chocolate tears for only $10,000 so you too can be a part of history.